All right, hello, whoever's genuinely watching this in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's go straight into the scriptures. Ezekiel 22, 30. And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land, that I should not destroy it, but I found none. Now, God showed me over the last few months, I'm not someone who takes drugs. I'm not someone who gets drunk or any nonsense like that anymore. And praise God for that because he freed me from that. But what God showed me is that there were principalities and there were strongholds and there were curses and entrance points to enemies in my family that because my ancestors didn't deal with it, I had to be used in the name of Jesus Christ to stand in the gap, to fight off the depression, the suicide, the mental illness, the spiritual illness, the physical illness, fighting against these principalities and powers in the name of Jesus Christ. And for months I went through a season where it was like I'd wake up every day and it was horrible. And I went through this for years and years and years, but in these last it only stopped about three weeks ago, but for about three or four months, I knew and I was growing in the knowledge by God's grace that I was in a deep spiritual battle because my ancestors did not stand in the gap and there was adultery, there was fornication, there was witchcraft, there was all these different sins and ordinances that were written against me and my family and lineage and God was looking for someone to stand in the gap for the sins of my physical generation and genealogy, the bloodline. Now, when we're born again, we're under a new spiritual bloodline and, and a covenant, a blood covenant with Christ, the second Adam. But that still doesn't mean that there's not problems that are working against us in the spiritual realm. And my life is an evidence of that. You know, it doesn't mean I wasn't saved six months ago, but it means that six months ago I didn't walk in the fullness of what God's called me to walk in because there were still foundational issues. And God had to bring me to a place of deep contrition and brokenness so that I just called out for him. And I went through months of crying, through feeling terrible, having physical pain in, in my body, having pain within my soul, being grievously vexed and then having principalities attack me with various things like depression, and thoughts of suicide and just low energy, low mood, all of this stuff. But God had me go through that because my previous, like my ancestors and all that in my family didn't address any of this. And some of them were complicit in engaging in these sins. And God is a holy God and he can't just he can't just oppose himself and not bother with with things and say, oh, these sins don't matter because he's a holy God. He hates sin. And God has used my life and he's even doing it now in the name of Jesus Christ. He's even doing it now where he is literally using the former brokenness that was my life of despair, of being alone, of having to go back to people and circumstances that had messed me up for a long time. And these people, even in my family, see me in such a low place. And God has brought me out of it. In the name of Jesus Christ, he's brought me out of it. And he's shown me the foundation is in him. And he is sufficient. He is enough. I don't like having chit chat with people. I don't like a lot of things that I used to enjoy in the world, even the more trivial things like the sports and all that. I don't care really at all about most of it. It's all secondary or tertiary. It's irrelevant. I just want to be in the presence of God. I just want to be in his presence. And I'm so addicted to Christ and he is moving so deeply in me and he's given me such great promises and he's fulfilling all these promises. God's not sitting, he's not in the third heaven looking at us and seeing someone who's genuinely trying, genuinely repenting and seeking him and just for a laugh going, oh, I can't be bothered with them. God has made us for a purpose and he delights to give us good things, but he's not going to give someone a blessing 
A lot of people that win the lottery end up being bankrupt and, and being worse off than, than before they'd won it. God's not going to give someone a massive blessing if they're going to squander it or make it or make their life and other people's lives worse. So God has to break us all to a point where our foundation is just in the Lord and it's just us and him. It's just us and him. Like David, when he was fleeing away from Saul and he was brought into a deep place of brokenness where he was a stranger to his wife and his children and all of this. And God was bringing him to a deep place of covenant and relationship to show him that, look, look, David, you've got to rely on me and me alone. This is what God was saying to him. And this is God's love letter to all of us right now. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that people hear this. Are you going to stand in the gap? Are you going to stand in the gap where your mum and your dad or your grandparents or your great grandparents didn't? I'm not saying it's going to be easy. I'm not saying you might not. You might have months where you are attacked by a principality who has access to your family, who's attacked your, your dad, your granddad and your great granddad. And now you've got to stand and fight this thing. But your strength will come from the Lord, just as my strength came from the Lord and is still coming from the Lord. By the Holy Spirit of God, God has given me boldness and power in Christ Jesus that in the spirit, when he was bringing me into a place of true prayer, being deep in the spirit and just being addicted to being in God's presence and just praying and praying and psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, even just singing in tongues. God just spontaneously bringing this out of me like a fountain, just overflowing. God wants to do this with all of us, to break that yoke that was there and to show us a new life, walking in the spirit and walking in truth and serving God, worshipping him in spirit and in truth. That all these other things just fade away and God will give us proper, proper prosperity, not with mansions and all this stuff and Ferraris, but with true peace that you will have contentment in whatever he's doing in your life. You will have contentment whether he gives you a million pounds. You'll have contentment whether you have one pound in your bank account. You'll have contentment whether you're betrayed by money. You'll have contentment whether people are coming to and being led to you by the Lord to be discipled. Because you will know that God is leading you. And this is what God has done in my life. And I'll tell you exactly how he did it. So this is it. He led me to a place of brokenness. And every day, and I still do this now, every single day, I wake up, I put on the whole armour of God and I say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for making me. I thank you for your son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for dying for my sins. Thank you for washing me in your holy blood. And then what do you do? You're, we're soldiers. We've got to put on our armour. I put on the helmet of salvation. I am saved by you, by your grace, Lord Jesus Christ, which is a gift. I have this, the mind of Christ, which thought it not robbery to be equal with you, God, but I take on the form of a servant. I'm renewed in the spirit of my mind. I have on the breastplate of righteousness. I have on the circumcised, the single heart of flesh and also a single mind because a double minded man's unstable in all his ways. I have the shield of faith quenching every fiery dart of the enemy. And at times when God has shown me in the spirit, this shield has been like a basically like a bubble around me and it's protected me saying low battery lord keep this video going and the sword of the spirit which is the word of god this is the lord jesus christ the sword of the spirit and we put on the belt of truth our loins our loins are girded with the belt of truth and then we, our feet are shod with the sandals of the gospel of peace and here's this has been a big one for me he gives us a garment of praise that replaces a spirit of heaviness. So all this heaviness, all of this depression, feeling like you have a body bag, feeling like there's just a massive, massive pressure against you, which is what I experienced for years. I'm talking over a decade. And this broke men and women in previous generations in my family, sent some people even to mental asylums. Even at the age of 18, I was in a mental asylum. I didn't want to be alive anymore. And God's brought me out of all of that. I'm 30 now and I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. And all the former things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. And I have on the robe of righteousness, 
the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, which he's imputed. He's put it on me. That all my sins have been written off. And our father in heaven, he sees me now as if I've never sinned. My sins are in a sea of forgetfulness. I've forgiven everyone. I've blessed my physical enemies. And in the spirit, God has taught me how to fight and how to wage warfare against the enemy. And God is rescuing many people in and around me now. And my life and your life too. God wants to use your life as a great testimony. He's using my life as a testimony for people who have been broken, who feel like nothing's ever going to change. Well, if we truly seek the Lord with everything, he will provide for us. He wants to. He delights in doing this. It's God's job. So I wake up every day. I put on the whole armor of God and I bless him. I'll say the Lord's prayer and I'll say, Lord, what do you want me to do? And then I listen. And we pray in the name of Jesus Christ for ears to hear, eyes to see him, a mouth to speak his glory. And I listen. And what he tells me to do, I then do. And I ask him throughout the day, led of the Holy Ghost, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, what do you want me to do? And I wait and I listen. And when I'm led, I test the spirit sometimes. I say, if you are of the Lord, say with your own mouth now, in the name of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. And either they'll confirm and they'll repeat those exact words, or they'll say nothing, or they'll struggle to say it. And we pray for discernment of spirits as well, to truly know when the Lord is speaking to us, because many false prophets have gone into the world. But God is amazing. He is truly amazing. If anyone here is wanting to go into a deeper place of prayer, a deeper place of worship with the Lord. Look in the description of this video. Drop me an email. I'll take it to prayer and, and we'll work something out with fellowship on Discord and us meeting up and praying together. But this is also a battle that belongs to the Lord. So the Lord is going to bring some people together in fellowship. But also the Lord wants you to have a relationship directly with him. There's too much codependency amongst the Christian community. We need to be Christ dependent, not codependent. I'm not going to be standing before the throne of God and someone else giving a testimony for me. Not an earthly person anyway. The Lord Jesus Christ, yes. But I'm going to have to give an account for my life. And so will you. So no man can save you from that. And Jeremiah says, curse is the man who trusts in man. What God is wanting for people here is to have a true covenantal relationship with him, a deep, intimate relationship with him through the Holy Spirit. But God is only going to go to wherever he's welcome. So open up, open up your door to Christ Jesus. He will come in and he will eat with you and keep seeking him. Keep seeking him. If he doesn't come straight away, keep seeking. There's a worldly saying, isn't there? Anything that's worth having doesn't come easily. The Lord wants to know us. But there's things that have to be broken off of our life first. Because the foundation has to be in Christ. A house can only be built on one foundation. There's not multiple foundations. So the foundation has to be good. It has to be in Christ. And I bless anyone who's genuinely watched this in the name of Jesus Christ. God is bringing his remnant of people in these last days to a whole new level. A whole new level of spiritual fervour. And humility and power. And just being led in all righteousness. God bless whoever's genuinely watching these videos. God bless whoever is seeking first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness. And then everything's added unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.